So if you look at my field, the biology of aging, people have got into this ridiculous habit these days of actually describing me as the first person who came along and said aging is a medical problem and we ought to fix it and we probably can, right? Complete nonsense. Um, you know, before me, there were people doing this in a much more unfriendly environment. Cynthia Kenyon was really the person who came, you know, who was previous to me. She, start, she made, made, a, made a name for herself in, um, in the field in 1993 by, uh, make, by demonstrating that one could double the lifespan of nematode worm. Um, and that shot her to prominence, and she used that prominence not only for her own career, but also to, um, you know, to highlight the fact that aging is a medical problem that we ought to try to fix, um, which was absolutely the third rail back then. You should not be able to get away with saying things like that. And she was doing it before she even had tenure at UC San Francisco. So I enormously admire Cynthia for that. And before her, a decade earlier than that, there was Michael Rhodes, who um, kind of was not so vulnerable because he's an evolutionary biologist and therefore, you know, he, he moves in different circles and talking about uh, the elimination of aging is something that would not be seen as politically so incendiary in his circles as it would be elsewhere, but still fairly incendiary. And yeah, he was perfectly happy to get up and use the fact that he became quite prominent by extending the lifespan of fruit flies in the 1980s, um, uh, um, you know, and, and to, to, to talk about this. And before him, there was Denham Harmon, who came up with the um, uh, free radical theory of aging, the first time anyone had come up with a really concrete biochemical um, hypothesis for why, for how the damage that we accumulate in our bodies actually gets generated. Um, and, uh, and he, you know, um, in 1970, he got into a huge fight with the rest of the gerontological establishment um, in the US to the point that he actually left the Gerontological Society of America, the main learned society in this field, and created his own breakaway organization called the American Aging Association, which is now, uh, you know, the most important um, biology of aging organization in the world, um, but took a long time, you know, for a long time, it was a real fringe movement. So, um, you know, we've got, I'm, I'm really totally standing on the shoulders of giants in all of this. And if I, if I compare FM to that group of people, you know, he was operating at that kind of time, 70s, 80s, 90s, and he was doing so across the board of futurism. So he was being laughed at by everybody, right? <laughs> um, and, and yet, you know, I can, I can totally understand why he, did, why he didn't find that particularly daunting, and he just, you know, took it as inevitable.